you guys have any I'm happy to go, honestly. Um, I did have a specific question in mind um, about timing with Section 2 essays. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, obviously I've sat the game set a few times now as well. Um, and each time I've kind of struggled with finishing essays. I think the first time I sat it, I didn't finish either one of them. And then over time I've kind of gotten, you know, one done and then one not so well um, and done or one, one of them done completely and the other one kind of halfway there. Um, and still like when I'm practicing essays, I'm getting kind of like the similar kind of outcome despite the amount of like, you know, work and effort that I've put in the past few months. Um, so yeah, probably not the right question to be asking so close to the game set, but at the same time, if you have any tips or advice on how to approach the timing dilemma in section two, that would be very uh, helpful. What? Just for my reference, what, 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 are you, what are you scoring in section two currently? Well, so my previous sits have been between like 55 and like 65. Um, yeah. And like, I've been doing the, um, cause I did the phrases mock exams. And so I've been scoring better on them, um, when I did them the past few weeks, but yeah, I kind of still around that mark when I don't finish the essays. Okay. Um, right. I mean, The way it seems from my perspective is that <clears throat> were it the case that an essay had to be a uh, like pre-prescribed length, like if I said, all right, you have to write 800 words, then I would completely understand where you're coming from because you just might not have 800 words and things to say or be able to write that quick, you know, if there's a fixed kind of word limit. But that's not the case with Gamsat. You could write 10 words. It's good. I'm not saying it's going to score badly, but I mean, it's probably better than going to like, then it's probably better than just truncating your essay in the middle. So only you are in control of how you pace yourself. Uh, so, I mean, my advice would be, I don't know if you've done it, but I always set my watch to 12 at the beginning. And I know that by 12.10, I need to be finishing the introduction. Or, you know, by 12.13 and, you know, by 12.17, I just made those numbers up. Otherwise, you work it to whatever you do. I've forgotten what I was doing before. But, yeah. um, and, you know, so you break it down. If you know there's four paragraphs, an intro, two bodies, and a conclusion, assuming that you write them all at equal pace, um, you know, reverse engineer some time for planning. So just give yourself four minutes to plan and just, you know, look at the, but you have to do it at 12 though, because your mind's not going to be able to process the maths of if you're working to, you know, your mind's yeah. not going to be like, yeah, at 3.17, I need to be, you know, that's not going to work. But if you do it every time to 12 and you know that at 12.04, you begin the introduction, 12.12, 12, you, you know, finish the introduction, 12.17, obviously those numbers aren't going to get you to half an hour, but, and then I would just check. And if you're not, I would wrap up that paragraph real quick because you're better to wrap up a paragraph in a truncated way and move on to the next one then you are to wrap up an essay quick and try and be truncated without okay. finishing nicely. Yep. And then if you're not, if you find yourself, like if you do that tomorrow, let's say, and you find yourself running over time, well then you're writing too much per paragraph. So then yep. what's your structure of a paragraph? If it's P E E O point example evaluation link, look at what percentages, you know, check your percentages. So you should roughly, there should be 10% point, 20% example, 50% evaluation, 10% link ballpark. Charmaine, I can see you writing. It was 10, 10, 20, 50, and 10. Um, the point is 10. This is ballpark, yeah? Point is 10, example is 20, evaluation, which is all the marks are, 50, link is 10. So if you know, maybe one of your sections sections within the paragraph is blowing out. Maybe, you know, you're spending 30% doing a point when you could have done it in 10. You could distill that bit down. So then the next time you go, all right, from now on all my point, if you've identified that to the problem, from now on my points are going to be 10. I'm just going to write one sentence. That's it. So I'm only allowed to do one sentence for a point. Discipline myself. Then I've got to into an example. I've got two sentences for my example. Yeah. So just chase it further down. You know you can't fit it in half now, so break it into four sections. Then if you find that you're missing the section, then go into that paragraph and go, okay, well, I, I mean, it, it's ultimately going to boil down to write less per yeah. paragraph. But yeah. you, know, you want to find out, okay, where is there a section 
that I'm blowing out, given that they're the ideal ratios. Maybe I'm finding that I'm, I'm wave, waving on a, or going on about my examples too much rather than shooting my shot, you know? Yeah, I usually find like at least like the explanation part of peel or whatever. I tend to like meander and then it just repeats itself sometimes and that's not what it's supposed to be doing at all. Um, so... Yeah, I think that's great advice on like working out, you know, what's taking the most amount of words and what's taking up most amount of your time when you're writing. Um, it sounds like from what you just said, it's the evaluation or the explanation. Yeah, yeah. I'll often sit there and, you know, really get in my head, like, and what comes out I still don't feel is, like, elusive at all. Like, it's it's not really doing much when it's on there, so. Well, then the core issue is that, the core issue then is that there's not a central idea that's driving the essay and you're writing the essay isn't, it comes back to that thing. I keep telling everyone, why would you ever write an essay if you didn't have to for the game set? The only reason anyone would ever write an essay is because they had a, an opinion about something. Otherwise no one would ever do it. Right? So if you do have an opinion, about, well, the, the first thing is you need to have an opinion about something. Mm. You hear, sorry, you came in late. Did you hear that whole spiel before about the opinion? Yeah, no, I did. Yeah, with JT. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you, you've got an opinion. And if that opinion is a central drive or thrust for the essay, then it shouldn't be the case that you get to an example or an explanation or evaluation or whatever, and you are waffling on because you're, the reason that your example existed was to service the point. And the reason the point existed was to service the contention. So by the time you arrive at the evaluation, it's not that you're making up things to say. You have things to say and that's why you're doing the explanation. Yeah. You don't like just come up with an explanation on the spot. Like, like you'd be better to write up. Like then you're just making stuff up. Well, see, that's the thing. And then I've been told, Oh, like, you know, plan better, but then I'm taking way too much time, like planning and, yeah, it doesn't work for me that way either. So I've, I've tried a few different things and I think it's mainly when it comes to actually writing it. Yeah, I just get stuck on, on what exactly it is that I need to write. So it sounds to me what you're saying is you've tried it multiple ways, but the current way that you're trying to do it is to write without having an intention of what you're writing. Do that, is that well, I, I do do a plan, like a a, kind of like similar to how you explained it before, like with the contention and topic sentences and then examples. Um, but I think it's the explanation part. Um, maybe if I even just put in a sentence in my plan that I can go off from, um, maybe that would, that would help me more. Once I get to that. To hey? What do you understand the explanation part to be? Like what is the intention or the point um, for explaining? Or let, let's say evaluate. Let's just use that word. So you're going to evaluate your point and example in light of the theme. Yep. So, yeah, probably just, you know, um, firstly explaining the example in the context of our topic sentence and then the theme and then asking the question why um, that occurs or what kind of, like, ramification it has. I think those are the questions that I ask myself when I'm writing that an anal analysis process, I guess. Um, yeah, it sounds it's to me like the like, way that I do it, it just kind of like happens. And then when it doesn't happen, it's an issue. <laughs> and then I'm just sitting there. My recommendation would be, and I guess it's hard to say, you know, a couple of weeks out, but yeah, yeah. there's that thing as well of, you know, you're only doing yourself a disservice by making it be that you have to get in this time, but just in so far as addressing the, the ideal writing, um, the point of an example isn't, the explanation isn't explaining the example. In fact, you could leave the example out. The, the, the example and the link only serve the purpose of clarifying your point. Your point will be necessary. If, if your point is going to have an entire paragraph written about it, it necessarily needs to be or have a degree of complexity. Otherwise, you'd just be like, your point would be, I don't know, Mac is bad for you. And then you spend 400 words arguing that. <laughs> I'm happy to believe you, but that's not good for me. Yeah. 
or smoking's going to kill me one day, maybe, you know, I just believe you. Or better yet, you know, I think that, uh, I, I think that racism is bad. I, I, by definition, don't need any, not because of the racism, because you said you believe. You don't need to prove to me what you believe. You're the only authority on that, right? So my point is that if you have a topic sentence that's necessarily big enough or you've bitten off enough to chew, then <laughs> the, the reason for the existence of the example is simply to ground that point that you've made in something concrete. Because you've talked in abstract terms and that's going to be harder for a market to process because it's going to be some kind of a degree of lacking clarity and of complexity and of connotative space. So you be generous to the market by giving an example. So I'll give you an example of that was abstract. Now I'm going to give you the concrete example. So I'm doing the same, right? Let's say my point was um, <laughs> uh, politicians are becoming caricatures of themselves in today's world, right? That's abstract, okay? And then I'll go in, I'm just going to assume, does anyone here know what a caricature is? I probably wouldn't have used that example in a, a caricature. Do you ever like go in the market and there's people drawing drawings of um, people, but they like exaggerate their features? That's a caricature. Okay, I'm going to use a different one because I don't know. Let me think something else. Um, the, uh, okay, um, the executive branch um, in America, which is to say the Office of Presidency, is accountable uh, to American citizens, not just in, uh, not just via the process of election and voting once every four years, uh, but in addition uh, through mediums such as art, um, writing, and other creative outlets such as music. Okay, you can follow the words of what I'm saying. You speak English, a little bit complex, but I'll just repeat it. Essentially, the executive branch of presidency of, of office in America, which is to say the presidency, is accountable to American people, not just through the structural uh, processes of voting every four years, but through creative outlets such as music, uh, art, and um, what else do I say? Writing. So you understand the words I'm saying, but you don't quite get the point. You could imply the point. You kind of, okay, I kind of get what you're saying. I'm not really sure where you're coming from, but I kind of understand what you mean. So, but at this point I've lost you. I have a, lot, I have a, a bit. So I go then into my example. Now, understand that this example could be left out. I'm only putting it in there so you understand me a bit better. But I could leave it out and just continue with and go into my evaluation. Right? But I'm going to give you an example to make things easier for you because I'm feeling generous to you. As in, I am always generous to markers because why would I not be? They're marking me. Um, so the, the, the example I'll give is um, political cartoons in uh, newspapers are a... Um, are a way of, are a potent way of telegraphing or distilling or concentrating um, public discontent into a format that is easily accessible, quickly digestible, and highly impactful. That's it, that's my example. So or at least with context to art. So you're wondering now why, or I'll go into another one. How about Guernica? So Guernica is an anti-war Picasso painting um, and it was famously shrouded um, during, I can't remember which war, but there was a war and, and they took it down from the gallery they put the curtain over it because it was famously anti-war. And you know, anyway. um, so, so that's a way of kind of, uh, of, of unifying public discontent with the powers that be uh, and, and making it harder for people to, to digest it. Um, Yeah, or anti-war poems after World War Two. You know, or Vietnam, in the Vietnam War in particular. You know, ha have a very <clears throat> art speaks a language that is intuitive. You don't need to be reading a paper or be an academic or be smart or even interested in academics or politics to be able to get art. You know, you might hear a song like I don't know, Midnight Oil. That's like a super old reference, or like. Um, or Guernica, or, or just see a cartoon in the Gamsat and have it imprinted on your consciousness and, and be impacted by it, right? It's therefore dangerous and it can be used to hold leaders accountable in much the same way as a jester in the court, in ancient courts. The jester had the most powerful role and they needed to be highly intelligent because they were the only person in the court that was allowed to mock the king. 
Because of this, they were allowed to speak straight and it was a way of communicating to the king their flaws or the things they might have done wrong. Because other people couldn't tell the king they'd done something wrong, but the jester could through jest. And so they served this important function of communicating to the king, but they needed to necessarily toe a line because if they crossed the line, they'd die or get killed. You know, so anyway, my point is that now you understand, you know, before I said that, you're like, okay, well, how does art, I kind of get what he's saying, but I don't quite get how art can hold leaders accountable. Now I've given you an example of political cartoons and newspapers being easily accessible and impactful uh, and easily digestible and, dissem and they're easily disseminated. Okay, so in this way, you know, negative opinions is obviously going to impact the vote and in that way um, it's incumbent on, on um, the powers that be if these things are in impacting them and, and people's opinions of them to if they want to have another presidency or, or term, then they need to adjust and therefore they're accountable. Okay, so now you understand what I mean. Right? I'm not now going to go explain my example. I just gave you the example to be kind to you. I could leave it out entirely and just continue. I could just pretend I didn't say that and I go, right, so leaders are accountable through, through mediums or creative mediums such as art, music and, and writing. Um, in, in a world today in America where it seems that, uh, <laughs> that the, the executive branch or the aforementioned executive branch is taking more and more liberties outside their um, the, the designated power within structural representative democracy, which is to say that, for example, uh, the president is not allowed to go to war without Congress, uh, the approval of Congress. But willfully does, both in Barack Obama's term, who wasn't particularly considered um, you know, uh, radical um, and, and well, talked about by Trump with, um, with North Korea. Um, so I'm going into evaluating my point, and uh, well, I mean that they're, they're kind of more examples, but it's it's semi-evaluation. I suppose I need to give a consequence of the theme, and without knowing what the theme is, it's hard for me to kind of evaluate something in light of the theme. But let's say the theme was I don't know, I don't know the power of art. Why not? Yeah. Um, so then I've given you an example of presidency accountable. Um, so it, and without going to the political cartoons thing, I go it, it it's it's evident then that art is. Oh, There's a degree of obviousness of the um, capacity of art to speak to people quickly and directly without needing, uh, without any language needing to have been um, learnt, engaged with. Um, there's almost no effort. Art, or the point of art is that it impacts us despite ourselves. There's a profanity and, and, and a, a, a beauty and a profanity to, to, to beauty wherein it demands to be paid attention to. And that's what art does. It makes you pay attention. So then I'll give you my point. I've now gone into some evaluation about the, how art necessarily um, does the work of communicating to you without you having to do the work of accessing it. <coughs> and, in this, and, and, and in that respect, it's powerful. Right? So I could make my whole paragraph, and there's no link there, there should have been, but my point here is I could make my whole paragraph, and many people do, abstract. I've given you a point that's abstract and left you to imply it, and then I've kind of said, well, you know, this is why art's powerful because it does the work of communicating. Now, they're good points. I'm just not being kind to you. If I chuck in the bit about the political cartoon and then I've gone abstract concrete. So now I've let you ram process while I'm giving you the concrete that's not difficult to process. Now you're with me again. See, I'm not just running ahead. I'm leading you through the forest. I'll wait for you to take the step. So I've given you something abstract. I'll let you digest it a bit, but I'll give you something simpler. Here's some concrete, not hard to follow. You with me now? Cool. Here's some more abstract. Bang, I'll hit you. Here's where I'm getting marks, okay? Now I've lost you again by the end of that because it's I'm going to go ham. I'm going to get marks here. I'm going to go ham. Okay? So then what am I going to do? The link because it's concrete. So I go, by the way, what you're supposed to have got from that is art is powerful because it does the work of communicating so that, so I could get rid of the example in the link. I'm just putting it there so you know what you're supposed to have gotten from my point and you kind of get what I mean. So the whole thing could just be point evaluation. So when you say explanation, you're explaining the point. I, I think that uh, you're explaining the example. The example doesn't need explaining. The example is just there to make more clear the point. The only thing that you'd be better to get rid of the word evaluation and explanation. Call it, um, call it more point. Or we'll call it um, deeper point. Deeper point about theme. Call it that from now on. 
instead of explanation. So you don't get like lost about it. And then it's very clear that you don't need to explain your example. All you need to do is give deeper point. So your whole essay could just be point, or the whole body paragraph could just be point, deeper point, done. I'm just saying it's better if you go point, example, deeper point, link. Which is just basically giving you a little bit, checking in that you understand me and giving you something that makes it more clear, then giving a bit more and then checking in that you got what you were supposed to get. Does that clarify the intent of evaluation or deeper point? Yeah, no, that was really insightful. Thank you for illustrating it like that. That was really good. So you don't need to, wa like the waffling then becomes, what you could only possibly waffle if you didn't have a deeper point. Yep. Which is to direct the source of the issue back at the planning stage. I'm not saying plan out as in plan what you're going to write. I'm saying how do you, ascend, what, what is the essential way that you confront the topic to begin with? But if all I'm saying, and I am saying, that all you need to do is have an opinion, that becomes your point. Just pick an opinion that you have something more to say than just the base opinion. Yep. And then that will become your deeper point. And you don't need to waffle. You don't need to make it up on the spot. You're just doing what the whole paragraph's there to do, which is to say the point. And if you don't know what to say, it just means you didn't have something to say to begin with. It's not that you don't know how to explain well or evaluate well. You just didn't have a point. And if you don't have a point, then spend your time not there. Spend your time on knowing a point. And then when you know the point, it should be easy to be more succinct about your point because you're not having to kind of write and then realizing what you're meant to be writing as you're writing. You just knew what you were going to write to begin with. And yep. then it will come across more succinct. Are there ways that you would, you know, approach going about that deep point or coming to that conclusion? Is that something that you have in mind when you write your main point at the start of the paragraph um, as you're writing it? I didn't understand the question. Sorry. I, 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 that deeper point that you, you kind of mentioned there, um, is that something that you'll have in the back of your head um, when you, you know, write your topic sentence or is it something that would come to you as you're, as you're writing um, that paragraph? If that makes sense. Um, well, I mean, I, I, the, I planned the topic sentences because they were the two premises that satisfied the plausibility of the contention. So I knew I was going to say the topic sentences. I'd ri written them when I planned the essay before I started writing. <clears throat> yep. Then from the topic sentences, I mean, see, topic sentences are just more opinions, but that you have a case for or an example of at least. See, I also have it in my head. I'm aware that an example is not a proof of anything. Most people are like, here's my point and here's three examples. Point proven, no. That's not to say, just because you gave three examples, not to say that it weren't 46 counter examples. You just didn't have time to write them all. That's not a very rigorous proof. I use the examples to embellish a point, not to prove anything. If I'm going to prove, I prove it in the evaluation section with logic. Or I just further go into it. So no, I don't. I, I mean, I... <sighs> I guess I'm doing on the fly what I did at the beginning. So assuming that you do have a point and an opinion and you have cases for that opinion. So assuming that the issue isn't how you've originally engaged with the prompts, because if you've got no issue having the prompts and going, oh yeah, I've got something great to say about that. Here's my point and here's my cases for why that's a correct point. If you've done that process, which I don't, if I had to guess, that would actually be the source of the problem. But yeah. if you had yeah. done yeah. that, then you would have chosen your topic sentences and then I would be doing it on the fly. So my topic sentence, for example, art is powerful. Let's say that's my thesis. And my topic sentence was um, uh, art. Uh, the executive branch of presidency is accountable to us through creative mediums, such as music and writing. Right? Then I think to myself, I just do this on the fly. What case do I have for that? And I go, okay, well, I've got an example of it. That doesn't exactly make my case though, but it's something. What else have I got? Um, and then I thought, and then it just came into my head that, well, I, I, I guess I probed myself and thought, why do I think that? Um, the thing is, I wouldn't have originally come up with it, with it as an idea for a topic sentence if I didn't have a case for it. It wouldn't have occurred to me. So I know that I already have a case for anything I choose to write. And so I just what was my case. So it's not that I consciously planned it, but I, I, I only say things that I believe and I only believe things that I have a case for generally. Um, 
So it was more just a, a matter of me accessing what my case was for it and then putting it down on paper. Um, yeah. Yep. But I think the issue is the quote interpretation. And if I'm not mistaken, um, Meg, have I written a, um, a blog on quote interpretation? I think I have. Yeah, you have. You have. And I think um, Anna posted in the Facebook group as well. There was a post about death. Um, and she wrote that you just have to keep asking yourself why at every sentence. And I know that helped me a few weeks ago. Okay, cool. Yep. So yeah, I would read... Oh, I went into all of this, by the way, in mm. massive detail in my books, which is probably, I wouldn't get them now this close to the exam. But if you find yourself seeing them again, um, yep. I mean, I, I, I don't think I could have made it more explicit. I literally went line by line through a perfect essay and said, and like each line has like three or 4,000 words written on it. I literally wrote like four and a half thousand words on the first line of a, like, and I went through. It was like, do this here and here's why. And explain it in as much detail as I can. But in any case, there are free chapters of my books on my website. And one of them, Meg says, was on quote. I feel like there was one on, on quote interpretation. Um, there's also like, if you go on the Facebook group, every week when the theme is posted, there's people posting their interpretations of the quotes. And then the more experienced people correcting them on their interpretation. Yep. So cool. reviewing those should, threads yeah. should... Um, I imagine give you some insight um, through reading my corrections of them and other people's corrections of them. Um, insight into how to approach quote interpretation. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome.